everyone, Josh here with Fresh Start Customs, and today we are back once again with the We Create Vision, but this is the new We Create Vision Pro. I'm excited to share this with you guys. I'm going to tell you why, if you don't own a laser already, this should be your very first laser, and I'm going to tell you exactly all the ins and outs of this one here today. If you already own a Vision 40 watt model, you may not want to get this right off the bat, and I'll tell you the reasons behind that too. But overall, if you want to upgrade, there are some changes here that you need to know about. So with that said, let's get into this. Um, first up, we're going to just uh, talk about the unboxing real quick. You get this real nice pamphlet here uh, with instructions on how to set this machine up. If you didn't watch our original Vision series, I'm going to refer you back to that video quite a bit in this video because it is the exact same machine with a few differences here that you need to know about. But if you need help setting one of these up, this instruction thing, you can't mess it up. If you do mess it up, just contact me. I'll help you out. It's super easy. It'll take like five, 10 minutes to set it up. Um, maybe a little bit un uh, longer because you have to unbox it, but it's a super easy setup process, which makes another reason why this should be your first machine is uh, this is one of the easiest machines to set up out there. The Vision was before. This one's the exact same setup as that Vision. So if you want to see that in that other video, check that out. Um, so with that said, let's jump into the details on what you need to know what's different with this. So the biggest difference is the laser head itself is a 45 watt versus either 40 or 20 watt model. Um, so I know you're what you're thinking, only five watts difference. That's not a huge upgrade. Well, they claim that the 45 watts in this has a special beam technology in it that they've uh, developed that can get the power of a 60 watt laser head out of a 45 watt laser head here. So they're comparing it to, I believe the company's name was Creality's laser head, which was 60 watt. Um, and that one claimed to do 22 millimeters in one pass. And we create is claiming that they can do uh, the 25 millimeter bass wood. So like soft bass wood in one pass on this machine. So that's, that's a huge, that's a huge accomplishment for them to pull off of the 45 watt laser head. Um, and then they also said that you can do an 18 millimeter hardwood in one pass as well. So like harder type of wood versus like basswood, for example. Um, so that is a huge difference. Um, and on top of all of that, they uh, kept it um, as clean of an engraving as possible. So what, what I mean by that is, Normal laser engravers have like a 0.2 uh, um, millimeter like laser head, um, like engraving area. And then this one, they got down to even a finer point of like 0 0.08 by 0 0.08 millimeters. So you can do really detailed engravings with this model as well. So they really put all that tech into that laser head, even though it's only five watt more. And I, I was, I was kind of skeptical myself, but I did do this little test run and, uh, I cut this, this, uh, harder material out, did it in one pass. I think I used seven power for this and it popped out phenomenally. It's super clean, easy looking. Um, I'm going to show you guys that here in just a second. Um, but let's talk about the other difference that is with this machine versus the other one that you can't tell on camera here. Um, that is the overall size of this machine. This machine is actually bigger than the old we create. I know it doesn't look bigger on camera with me standing next to it, but it is bigger. Um, it is about 19.7 inches by 12.6 inches for the working area. And then the actual bed area is even larger than that. I believe it's like 22 point something by 15 or, or by, uh, yeah, 15.75 inches. Um, so that, that is a, a larger work area for sure. So you can fit like larger sheets of material in there. We can finally fit like a 12 by 20 sheet in there perfectly without having to worry about it. So if you're used to like the Glowforge size sheets, you'll be able to fit that in here. But just keep in mind, it'll still be about the same working area of like a Glowforge. Actually, it's a little bit bigger than a Glowforge because Glowforge after you shrink it down is only like 18 by I think 10.9. So this one's going to be 19.7 by 12.6 inches. So you're going to be able to cut even bigger than what a Glowforge can, for example. So those are the main differences on this. 
The other thing that you need to be aware of is when you order this one, um, which is a good thing, is uh, you get the um, Rotary Pro option um, automatically. If you have no other option than get this with it, this automatically comes with it. But the old Chuck, um, the old Chucks came with it as well in my kit. I just don't have that out right now. But you will get that Rotary Pro set for it as well. So keep that in mind. It's super cool. Um, it's still kind of up in the air if you're gonna automatically get the uh, two watt infrared with it, but that is on the way. So we'll be doing another video on that as well. But if you don't, you just buy that as a package separately. Um, but they may end up including that in it. I don't know if that's a for sure done thing or not. But as of recording this video, we are going to be on pre-release here um, uh, whenever I drop this video here. So if you're interested in this machine, check that out in the link down below. I'm gonna show you guys cutting and engraving some certain um, items on this. We got a cool leather uh, hat patch here. We got that other um, example that I showed you just a second ago different things like that. I'm going to show you actually cutting this thing. Overall, I am super impressed with this. Um, even though it is only five watts more, like I said, if you already own the 40 watt model, you may want to hold off and not upgrade on this because um, it's going to do the same thing. The 20 watt and the 40 watt will be able to do the same capable things as this one, except you may have to cut like multiple passes on like a 20 watt versus what this could do in one pass on this 45 watt, which they say is as strong as a 60 watt. So keep that in mind. But the reason why I say this should be your very first machine is we create software is actually super easy to use. I know that there's been bugs throughout some of their software upgrades or a new thing that arises, but they are working on another software update they're trying to patch anything that was uh, reported on. And I've been testing out some of their software too and reporting to them as well. So I'm hoping to see a nice software improvement as well for those. But overall, the uh, usability on the WeCreate is so easy in my opinion compared to some lasers, um, especially the fact that this raises and lowers in height. Uh, you can just drop in a large item without having to have like a giant riser base on it. Um, and then having it um, take up that space all the time. I know technically you leave this up, but the fact that you can uh, not have to remove the honey bed tray every single time um, you want to use that riser base and you just push autofocus, it automatically lowers, automatically raises. It, it's a nice convenient feature to have um, on a laser engraver. And the fact that you're getting that 45 watts, uh, which is capable of 60 watts, for your first laser engraver, this is gonna be an awesome option. The only th way that I don't suggest this as your first laser is if you want to do clear acrylic. So um, any kind of clear acrylic or translucent acrylic, a diode laser still isn't gonna cut it no matter how strong you're getting. Um, the, the wavelength is just not up to par on what a clear acrylic needs. You will need a CO2 machine for that. So just keep that in mind, clear acrylic isn't gonna be the way to go for this one here. Um, this also in the software has uh, framing technology. They added this a couple patches ago uh, where you can actually frame out your laser, uh, your laser path of what you're engraving as well. So that's a nice feature to have. I just wanted to throw that in and mention that as a feature too, just in case you were wondering if it is compatible with that. Um, other than that, all of the ports on the back are the exact same as the old Vision. So check out my last video if you want to see all of those. Um, you just vent it right out the window or you can get the fume extractor. I personally vent out the window. I think it works a little bit better. Um, but enough of me talking. Let's go ahead and show you some engravings. We'll close out this video. If you guys want to purchase this, use the link down in the description below. And also join our We Create Users group. Um, we're going to add that down below too, and we'll help you guys get started on this here. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. All right, you guys, we're going to take a quick look at the engraving on the WeCreate Vision Pro 45 watt model. Uh, this is my new logo of my new YouTube channel called uh, Midlife Chaos. If you want to check out my life outside of laser engraving, uh, check out that channel down in the link below as well. But with that said, 
Uh, this is just a regular PNG file. I didn't convert this into an SVG. I wanted to see how well it did with really dark gray um, comparison to a black. So the jacket in this is very close in color and I expected it to be completely washed out and it did look washed out right after this engraving where it looked like it was just completely a black engraving. But I went ahead and took some simple green to it afterwards cleaned it up and you can see a color difference in raises and lowering um, of the jacket in there in different parts if you look close enough. And it turned out awesome. This would be amazing as a leather hat patch. And you'll see that here in the next engraving, a, a little leather patch that I've done. Um, but this turned out phenomenal here. I'll go ahead and speed this up, show you what it looked like dirty in just a second here. And then um, after that, I'll show you it uh, cleaned up here. And it turns out looking amazing all right guys so as you can see this is now done and it looks like it's all kind of washed together because it has that laser dust in there I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like here with the laser dust and everything in so it definitely looks like it's washed together here and I'm gonna clean it up and show you what it looks like after all right, you guys, so here is an after photo of what it looks like after I cleaned it up. If you look close enough, you can see all the details in the jacket there. And like I said, this is a grayscaled PNG image. So um, it's not gonna look the best with that, but overall for a first shot, this looks amazing in my opinion. Um, and I do have an SVG version of this that I'll engrave in the future. But for now, I just wanted to test a regular PNG so let's go ahead and jump into the leather hat patch next. All right, you guys, so real quick, we're gonna be using this blue leather patch here, and then I'm gonna be using the preset settings that were automatically set when I chose blue leather. Um, this is just uh, a random guess in the dark because they don't have any of these settings on here as of right now, because this is just a beta testing machine. So I'm gonna just go with this, see what it turns out like. Hopefully it looks good for the video, and then I'll show you guys that here. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just click autofocus, and then the laser here is gonna go down, and you'll see it autofocus on that leather patch here. So it auto focuses on the center of your design every time, so just make sure your design is centered where you want it to be. I'm just taking a total shot in the dark here, and uh, we now have that autofocused here. So we're gonna set this up and show you the engraving here. I'm gonna just hit start once this is done autofocusing. Um, as you can see, after an autofocus, it kind of shifts the alignment. I'm gonna go ahead and center that up a little bit more. That's just because the height of the um, laser has changed. We're gonna click start. And then you can actually frame out where it'll land. Um, this basically makes the laser go ahead and frame around the area. Um, I guess I'll just do that really quick to show you. But you can see it frame right there, right where it's gonna land. And then we're gonna just call that good. And we're gonna go ahead and just click send. And then we can click start over here. And as you can see, it is now starting, and I'll let you guys watch this. I'm gonna prop you up here, and then you can watch this go. All right, you guys, so as you can see, this is what it turned out like. I need to go ahead and wipe off some of this laser dust here. I'll probably do that later and show you an end result um, after it's wiped off. But overall, for just randomly selecting settings, not knowing what to select there, this turned out really cool um, for just an AI generated uh, image here. All right, guys, so here is a quick look at what the patch looks like after a quick um, wipe down with Simple Green. Looks phenomenal now without that laser dust on there. Um, amazing results uh, for the first little test on leather here with the uh, 45 watt We Create Pro.